Hey guys. <sighs> okay. So I know it's been a while since I've updated. Um, and <laughs> I wish I could, I could say it's because things have been going well, but it's mainly because things, nothing has really been going on. Um, I finished taking the Provera on October 16th, so the 17th was my first day off of the medication. Um, tomorrow, which is the 30th, will be 14 days since I've taken the last one. Um, and I know this sounds kind of crazy. And I've been really going back and forth, but I've done a lot of research and it seems like nowadays for women that are not having periods, um, doc fertility doctors mainly. And the reason that OBGYNs are not doing this is because usually they say that they're not quite as up to date on things as, um, the fertility doctors are. So... I am just going to begin taking the Clomid for five days and then just take a OPK every day after that to see if it causes me to ovulate. Um, best case scenario is I ovulate, I don't get pregnant, or I do get pregnant. You know, worst case scenario, nothing happens. But if anything, I just kind of hope that I do ovulate and I could get a period if I don't get pregnant or I you know, can get pregnant. Um, so here it goes. First 50 milligram dose, October the 29th. Um, I look forward to updating y'all further on how it goes and fingers crossed it's good news. Hey guys. Okay, so um, I haven't really updated in a while, so I wanted to do that. Um, we got two puppies recently, and that has helped me a lot with um, the baby fever. <laughs> um, and helped me be a lot more patient. But I've been really frustrated because the Provera didn't work. I spotted, but that was it. I never had anything other than spotting, and that was really, really disappointing. Um, I feel like I have so much foundation on my lips. Ugh. And so, the doctor was said I was supposed to call her, but I kind of did something bad, and I did it. Um, and the only reason I did it is because I've done a lot of research that says that a lot of people that don't have periods have a lot more success when they don't have a period kick started with Provera and instead just start the Clomid and then um, ovulate and have a period from that. And so since I didn't have a period the Provera, I figured the next best thing to do after I waited 14 days was to take the Clomid for five days. Hold on. No, Mama, you're not going out there. No, no. Sorry. And so, um, I did the Clomid for five days and, you know, I, the only really side effect I had was hot flashes, which I don't know if that's a bad thing because I didn't have a lot of side effects. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to ovulate or not. Oh, sorry. My nose is just, it's running really bad. Um, so that's been really frustrating and but yesterday I got one of the darkest lines I have ever gotten um, with an OPK. So, fingers crossed today. It said Wednesday or Thursday on my app is when I should ovulate just based off the cycle that I'm on. And um, I kind of just went with, helped with like where I took the Clomid and everything. The app I have is really cool. It can like say like if you're taking progesterone or Clomid or you know whatever. So that's been really helpful. I'm on cycle day I believe 14. 
Um, so, fingers crossed the OPK goes well today. I may film it. Um, I have an appointment at 11. I usually, my best OPKs are usually around 1 p.m. So I'm hoping I'll be home between 1 and 2 so I can take it. I'm going to save and hold it until then so I can test it. Um, also, I did my eyeshadow today for the first time ever because I've been practicing. I have one of the Shane palettes coming soon, so I've been wanting to practice. Um, I really have to do kind of a natural look or else people are going to be like, what is wrong with you? Because I never wear makeup, but it's actually looking a lot better on my skin than I was. And I was really like insecure about my makeup for a little bit there because it almost looked worse when I had makeup on versus not. But looks pretty good on camera. I did a little bit of like a shiny green. And I think it really like makes my eyes look really green. So. Just want to keep you updated. Um, I'll film when I do that OPK today. And fingers crossed today or tomorrow we get that positive opk i've never ever gotten a positive opk so i really 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 hope i can this cycle if not then i really am thinking maybe i should switch to famera instead of clomid but i'll leave that up to my doctor um and i'll keep y'all in the loop bye <sighs> hey guys okay so, today is November 15th, which means for me, it is cycle day 22. And you may think that means, oh my gosh, you should start your periods. <laughs> Or, <laughs> you think I probably ovulated a week or two ago. Well, nope, that wasn't the case. Um, so, I just wanted to go over with y'all. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Um, that I did ovulate. I'm very sorry I didn't record it. Um, I had a period of time, like as you can see, I'm just going to show y'all. That's when I started the Provera. I was on it for 10 days and didn't have any sort of period for about 14 days. And, um, I mean, as you can see, I had like major spotting and cramping all during that, my last few days on it. And I had been told by some people that it did take them 14 days to bleed, but I never had a bleed. So that was really frustrating. Um, and so after I waited 14 days, I started the Clomid and I just counted October 25th as cycle day one. And then I did the Clomid cycle day five through nine. Like my doctor had told me, the only thing is, is I just didn't have a period. Um, and I was kind of like, well, let's see what happens. So, um, I finished my last Clomid pill on November 2nd, which was cycle day nine. And like I said, today is cycle day 22. Um, I started testing every day after um, my last Clomid pill. And I got really frustrated because nothing was happening. Um, I was checking and checking and checking and nothing. But I'm very frustrated with myself because I did stop. I didn't even take my basal body temperature for about like four or five days. And then on... November 11th, the 10th I was having cramping, and on November 11th, I just like had this feeling, and something told me when I went to the bathroom, take a uh, ovulation test. I took the test, <laughs> and it came back blazing positive. And I was literally in shock like i had literally left it in the bathroom walked away came back later and was like what 
And so right after that, I took some more. And as you can see here, I had very good positives. This was cycle day 18, um, which was the 12th or the 11th. And then the 12th, I also had very, very, very high positive ones, which was cycle day 19, which I know like a lot of women do ovulate around that time. Um, so it's probably not that big of a deal, but it was just like extremely shocking. And I definitely cried when I got that positive OPK. Um, this is from cycle day 19 on. This was probably my highest one. And this is the pre-mom and this is the femimeter. Um, and from what I read, because the, the pre-mom ones got a lot darker than the femimeter, and I looked up like their sensitivity and the femimeter is 25 and the pre-mom or easy home, that's what I mean, the easy homes are 20. So that makes a little bit of sense as why the one was darker than the other. So this was at 1230. This was at 4 p.m., 6 p.m., somewhere between that time. Um, my probably most positive was up here. And then these have been the days after. So this was cycle day 20, 1 DPO, um, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., um, and 1 p.m. Sorry, I'm trying to look at it and it's backwards. And then this was cycle day 21, 2 DPO. And that was first thing this morning. And from my app, the ones that I'm having, they're still saying it's high. But um, in all honesty, that was kind of pretty accurate of like my normal ones that I get. Um, they're usually in like the high range or um, I at least have a little bit of a line. I don't know if that's because of like my, if I have PCOS, I don't know. Um, but they did get lighter and that's what I wanted. And, um, I'm supposed to get blood work done eight days after my positive. And so I'm either going to get it Tuesday, which is, um, Tuesday this coming week, which would be the 19th, I believe that would be seven DPO. And then the 20th would be eight DPO. Um, which if you go off the first positive I had, was cycle day 18 and the second positive I had was cycle day 19 which probably means I ovulated cycle day 19 20 somewhere in that range um but it, you know what I mean like it's kind of confusing so I'm tempted to go it on cycle day 19 I mean cycle day 26 which would be 7 DPO 11 19 but I'll probably just do whatever works with my schedule better. I know I have something on the 19th, so it may be better, work out better for me to go the 20th. Um, and I will update y'all on the blood work and how that goes. So, um, I've also been charting my um, basal body temperature. And I'll include a picture of that right Okay, so um, like I said, those there were like four or five days I wasn't taking, which I think was like probably like the third or fourth through the fifth, the sixth, and then I tested on 11-11. So there was a few days in there I didn't have basal body temperature, but I know after you ovulate, one way to confirm that you ovulated is to have your temperature peak. And my temperature really stays in that like 97.56 range. Like I've had probably probably more reads at that level than any other. Like I can literally just like say it off the top of my head because it's happened that much. Um, this morning, I, I had a little tiny bit of a drop after my day of my positive OPK. Um... And then it started going up from there. So yesterday wasn't huge, but it was a higher than my norm. It was higher than 97.5. And then this morning it was almost, it was 97.97, .97, which is like literally right at 98. 
Um, and I'm hoping tomorrow it'll be even higher. And I got a lot of hot flashes last night, which is how I kind of felt when I was on the progesterone. Um, and all during while I was on the progesterone, my temperature was at the 98 range because that is a lot, um, I, it like rises your temperature, which is why I should have a rise right now is because after ovulation, my progesterone should go up and make my temperature go up. Um, so blood test Tuesday, I'll update you on that.